So let's go to the contract. The contract is almost identical to what we've seen in Remix, except for one thing. In here, we take a more advanced approach to managing permissions. So instead of having owner and manually re requiring the message sender to be owner, we introduce access control. And access control is part of the open, open Zeppelin contract library. You can grab it from there. And it <coughs> offers you to have multiple roles that can be granted and which can be delegated between different groups of people, which allows us to allow one group of people to be calling mint function and the other one to be calling burn. So let's go through the process of deployment. And in order to do that, we'll be running our script, which is deploy.ts. It is pretty simple. We are using ethers.js, which is a very useful library. And what we are doing is first creating an instance of contract factory. Think of it as a blueprint. And then deploying this token factory. So we look at all the methods and functions that need to be present and just call it deploy by inputting the value that is required by the contract or constructor of our contract. So we can see here initial supply. So in here we can specify the name of our token and it's going to be test token and TST for simple. We save this. Now we go to deploy script. We compile our contracts. and we run the script. So we say run script deploy.ts and we specify the network with the keyword network and <laughs> this Columbus, this word, needs to match what you spell here. But if you clone the repo the way it is, you can just copy the whole process. So let's check our deploy script. So we are going to mint three tokens as an initial supply for us. And let's do that. Uh, okay, some weird package, but... Okay, that's weird. Oh, yes, yes. That was a typo. So we run scripts. Deploy.ts. Yet again, specify the network. And Columbus. And we can see that the token was deployed to this address. Now we grab the address, go back to our wallet, and we'll be able to actually check whether we have this token. So we go to the main page, portfolio, click on add token, paste the address. You will see a preview of token name and token symbol, which matches what we wanted. And we press add token. And congratulations, now you can see your token at the bottom of your wallet. So we see that we have three test tokens and let's get some more of them. So this should show you how you, you can interact with an instance of a deployed contract. Uh, yet again, we use ethers.js library, but now a different method, get contract that. Uh, it takes the name of the contract or interfaces, which has all the functions and methods spelled out and the address of the contract we want to interact with. So for now it's this one. We switch it and we choose to deploy. So we, we call mint on the deployed con uh, all the deployed token. Uh, it takes the argument of what address to mint tokens to and the amount of tokens to be minted. So we go to our wallet, go to portfolio. Uh, we choose the C chain here and copy this address. C chain is the, the chain you use to interact with smart contracts. So this is your address. So we paste it here. And let's change the value to yet again 42. Now, instead of running deploy, we run mint. And even though there is no visual feedback, it was a success. So in order to do that, we update the page. We will have to grab, grab our key again. Login. 
and all right it's gone okay that is because it doesn't save the cookies and that is how it's saved by that is the point you would have seen this if your browser wasn't set up like mine so back to the code Uh, let's now go to the next example and you can do it by switching the branch mm, let's go to nft yeah we need to first commit our changes okay and in here you can see Yet again, the same implication we have used in Remix, which is a simple NFT. And we can go ahead and deploy like we did with token. So we do the same thing. Go npx card head run scripts deploy.ts network clones. And it was a success, we have our NFT deployed and you can do the same by going to collectibles, add collectibles and by inputting it here. Okay, this is not the one. Okay, so, so, ah, obviously. We didn't switch to Columbus. And you can also see the test token here. And we can try to add the collectible. And yep, it is present, it is here. So let's go back. Now the next example. Which is going to be this one. And we'll very quickly run through it because what I want to show you here is a new standard. Uh, so you have heard about ERC721 and ERC1155 is also an NFT. But the difference here is it allows for coexisting of both fungible and non-fungible tokens. And also there is a display of how you can actually see pictures uh, which are linked to these NFTs. And I'll just briefly describe the process. The way it works, we give some IPFS or some other storage link, which has JSON files stored there. It contains metadata about these NFTs and a link to the image. And when some external resource reads of the code, that's just the pathway he goes through and pulls the images. And there's nothing interesting here besides that. So we go to an interesting one which is going to be <coughs> staking and now i'm going to tell you about one more interesting feature which is the know your customer verification which i told you about before so first of all when you are trying to deploy a contract you are required to have a know your customer or identity verified account so if you didn't verify your account you simply wouldn't be able to deploy it but Besides that, you can also require the functions not to be called by people who haven't got their wallets verified. And in here, we have a simple contract which shows how to do that. We need to have a, an address of Camino admin, and this is this one, uh, and this requirement, which calls get know your customer state of the message sender on this contract. <coughs> and it will receive one of the two outputs, which is either zero if it's not the case and one if the account is verified. So let's deploy this contract. You can see here that this is the script. And it is deployed here. So now we go to enter or yeah, to enter and let's oh yeah, 
is the pointer. Uh, oops. Okay, so we paste our address here, creating an instance of a already deployed contract, and we call the function of get in. So let's run this script. And we see the output success. Now, to actually verify it, we come to the other script, which is check entry, where we had the same thing. Yet again, we need to now put the address here and check whether the address we are initiating the call from has a know your customer status. And in order to do that, we yet again come here, copy the address, put it here, and run the script. And it says false. So now let's try to go to deploy your to enter again. We run the script enter. We grab the same address or yep, now we go to check entry and run it again. And now it is true. So that's that. You can also see an example of staking here. And it is a more advanced implications on the same topic. We also have a whole staking system here. So the point here is we restrict anyone who is not your cust get uh, know your customer verified to be calling or participating in our staking campaign. And that is that for our example. So I'm pushing all the changes, so we are staying in track. And we switch to our last branch. Uh -huh.